Today, we're gonna build a super tiny and portable pedal board. I've got GoPro Vision right here. It's gonna be pretty basic, but let's do it. Hey everyone, it's Pat and welcome back to another video. For those of you who don't know me, I make all sorts of videos around creating music, tips, tricks, tutorials, and that includes pedal board builds like this one. So if that's something you're into, maybe you're a musician, a producer, you just wanna learn some stuff, consider subscribing. So a small, tiny pedal board like this is really up my alley. It's only for the past one or two years maybe that I've been playing with a larger pedal board. If ever you wanna see a rundown of that pedal board, you can click right here. I've linked it in the little pop-up thing. But a small pedal board is really what I've played for most of my guitar playing career. So before we start putting pedals on it, let me tell you what else we're gonna need to build this pedal board. First of all, you're obviously going to need a pedal board. This is a pedal train mini or nano, I'm not sure I remember. Uh, and in any case, since I've bought it, they changed both the name and the form factor. We're probably going to be able to fit five or six pedals on it. Otherwise, you're going to need a bunch of patch cords. You can buy these in a pack or individually or even buy a kit that you assemble yourself. That's really up to your preference. And you're also going to need some power. For this build, we're going to use a one spot nine volt daisy chain. Now, daisy chaining your pedals is really not the ideal way to go. I prefer to have a dedicated power supply with isolated outputs, but for such a small pedal board like this one, this will have to do. Otherwise, you're gonna need a whole bunch of Velcro. If you've ever bought a pedal train, you know that it comes with it. Otherwise, you can order some online or go to your hardware store and get some, but make sure to get the industrial stuff. It's really important. The sort of unspoken rule is to use the soft or hoop side of the Velcro on the board and then use the harder hook side on the pedals. All right, let's build this thing. The first thing I always put on my board is my tuner. I know that a lot of people like to put it elsewhere and it doesn't really make a difference where you put it. I always put my tuner at the front of my signal chain. I'm gonna go ahead and do that and I'm gonna plug in a patch cord. The second thing I almost always put in my signal chain is any kind of octave or pitch pedal. In this case, we're gonna be using an EHX POG and we're gonna put it right after the tuner. The reason why I have this immediately after my tuner is that I want to make sure that the signal that that pedal gets is as clean as possible. You can try and experiment and put a distortion or anything before that pedal, but personally, my preference is to make sure that uh, the POG or any kind of octave pedal gets the cleanest signal possible. And I'm just gonna go ahead and put a patch cord right away. Now, we're only two pedals in and pedal order is sort of already up for debate. In my opinion, there's no absolute finite pedal order, but there's sort of guidelines that you can use and apply on your pedal board to make sure that things sound best. In my opinion, tuner goes first and then octave pedals or anything like that. And then I like to use any kind of modulation like the Phase 90, for example. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it right here. Now, I love using a Phase 90. It's really one of those quintessential effects. And on my big board, I actually have a distortion before it and immediately after it. Uh, I kind of like having a distortion after it, so we're gonna replicate this here. Uh, but you can really try putting this before or after a distortion. And of course, we're gonna put a patch cord right here. The next thing we're gonna get into is dynamics and we're gonna add an overdrive. In this case, this is the uh, Mantra overdrive from Blackout Effectors. We're gonna go ahead and put it right here, try to fit as many pedals as we can. Like I said, I like having my distortion after my phaser and after any kind of octave pedal. But again, you can really experiment and try putting your distortion before all of that if you want, especially if you have a fuzz. If you have an old fuzz pedal, try putting that in front of your chain and you'll see it really sounds great when it's in front. My goal here is not to start an argument on pedal order. It's really just to build a fun, small, portable pedal board and show you the basics of building one. Assuming that your amp probably has a reverb, the best thing to add is a delay. This is the Red Repeat by Carl Martin. It's a digital delay, but it's voiced uh, to sound like an analog one. I really like using this. Well, look at that. All it took was five pedals to cover the entire surface of this pedal board, but it's a really tiny one. All you have to do now is to power it. So you can undo your daisy chain and plug in your pedals and you're pretty much good to go. So the way I like to do it is to take the last cable and to put it on the first pedal and then go for each pedal after that. This one's a bit tricky. It's on the side, so you can do some fiddling and that's it a quick tip if you want to make sure that this cable doesn't disconnect if someone trips on it or something like that take the two ends like this 
and just make a slight little knot and just connect it like this. Now, if anything happens on stage or anything like that and the cable's pulled, it won't disconnect. All right, so that's pretty much it in terms of building the smallest portable pedal board that you can have. You've got a tuner, an octave pedal, you have some sort of modulation, a distortion, and then a time-based effect. But if there's one thing I'd recommend if you've never built a board like this or you're just getting started or just learning how to do it, it'd be to follow the sort of general guidelines in terms of pedal order, what should go before what and what should go after what. I'll put a couple links in the description from different sources so that you can learn uh, the basics of pedal order or just watch that pedal show. There's well over 100 hours of content there. It's been a great learning platform for me and I'm sure it could be for you too. In any case, I hope you've enjoyed the super basic how to build a small pedal board. If you did, don't be afraid to leave a like on your way out really makes a difference for such a small creator as myself. Otherwise, my Instagram, Patreon, podcast, Twitter, Facebook links, all this stuff is in the description down below. Thank you so much for watching. Go build yourself a new pedal board. I'll see you next time.